everyone and welcome to this live webinar on finance transformation and cost optimization in a global crisis. My name is Muskan, part of the marketing team at Datamatics and I shall be your moderator for this webinar. The objective of today's session is to provide you an overview on how latest tools and technologies are applied in FNA transformation and how it helps us to operate seamlessly in situations such as war, technology disruptions, impending recession or any other such uncertainties. So, what's the best way to go about this and how can you get the most out of your technology? I also have a set of obligatory housekeeping announcements to go over before we officially get started. Audience is on mute by the default settings of the webinar. Leverage the functionality of chat, Q&A and hand raise. Your questions will be addressed at the end of the session. The on-demand recording of this session will be available on our website and shared with all of you in a follow-up email along with any bonus content. This is your forum to type in your biggest questions or challenges that your finance team is facing. The one answer that will make your time worthwhile and that is what we're going to do for the next one hour. We have with us Naveen Gupta, EVP and Head of Global BPM at Datamatics. Naveen has over 30 years of experience in operations, delivery, business consulting and program management. He is also an industry leader in f and transformation. He has extensively worked in financial services. His core strengths lie in delivery management, incubating new practices, and managing digital transformation. In the past, he was instrumental in building the ERP practice, Oracle and PeopleSoft, in multiple organizations. Thanks for being with us, Naveen. We will also be having Vimal Karat as a co-presenter who will address the Q&A session in the end. Over to you, Naveen. Thank you, Muskan. Firstly, I would like to welcome you all to this session, and I do hope that it will bring some insights for all of you to really how to bring finance transformation and cost optimization. We have seen the crisis like COVID earlier. We have seen Ukraine war. We have also seen many climate related uh, crises coming in. And how, how do we really bring in the finance transformation? So the agenda which we have drawn out for the today's discussion is how to keep the light on how to really run business as usual without impacting our normal day-to-day -day affair. What are the key drivers for FNA transformation? How does technologies like BPM, robotic process automation, analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, they build, they bring in the transformation in the FNA world. And then what are, should be the ideal roadmap for FNA transformation? Keeping the lights on, as we saw in the last couple of years, more than three years now, how has our life got impacted without any mobility, going to the office, any, without any logistic support, working from home, working from remote, how do we really keep the lights on? We have so much of a challenges of our material supply from supplier, but more than that is how to make payment to them so that they again supply back where we can supply finished good to the end customers. So that is what we really do by building in lots and lots of automation to really have the lights on and run business as usual, irrespective of whatever crisis they are going through. Even Gartner has really recently published that we are looking at an impending recession as well as global crisis. All of us are aware of the Ukraine war and we don't even know when it is going to end. Recession, from the perspective of inflation, 90% of the CFOs and CEOs believe that inflation will be a significant factor in 2022. Non-labor input cost is going to go out of the roof is what 69% of the CFOs believe in. We are all witnessing to the scarce and expensive talent. Almost 49% of the new offers which we are making, they already have more than three job offers in their hand. The cost of expensive talent, uh, specialized talent is going high and high. Global supply contract co constraints are there. How do we supply and how do we really make sure that we run the process end to end so that our supply chain issues are not plagued by not making the payment. So the key drivers for transformation with a changing business landscape, a landscape is forcing us to have an enterprise redesign of our traditional business model. 
our key business objectives are evolving now it is no longer running business as usual it is increasing revenue growth whether it is direct revenue related roles or whether it is support functions or even cfo back office focus on the key business kpis all of them should help us really managing working capital optimization what is our end to end transformational approach which is required to reap sustainable benefits when we look at the landscape and how rapidly it is changing we see how the impact of macroeconomic factors are ruling our businesses how disruptive technologies are changing the entire paradigm of running the business how dynamic and competitive landscape is becoming and how the customer needs are changing with new laws and regulation for compliance because of lots and lots of fraud and wrong fraudulent transactions which are happening how laws and regulations are impacting our business to that thus it is also building in the key drivers for the fna transformation where we should have a sustainable cost reduction we should meet our dynamic customer uh, customer requirement whatever changes it is going through our upscaling and reactive cost reduction model compliance with the government regulations we see across the globe how e invoicing whether it is us europe asia how it is changing the entire way government is integrating the e invoicing with the uh, supplier port focus on long term innovation digitalizing and automating the process overcome despite physical challenges and also keeping up to the competition key business objectives of cfo and finance leaders business impact is certainly one of them which is 48% of them felt that it is of very high importance and 52% still feel that it is a medium high importance but again it is important operational efficiency almost 100% of cfos believe is the most important business objective cost reduction 91% of cfos believe cost reduction is important parameter but even 9% felt that yes it not very high important but it still has a medium high importance so what do we do we need to bring in end to end transformational approach during crisis we need to plan we need to really figure out various scenario and then based upon changing circumstances implement all the models and input transformation engine well in advance we need to consolidate our standardized operating model we need to implement digital process automation with the help of technologies available if you look at end to end transformational approach the most important when we begin any transformation journey is to manage change which is the most difficult let me tell you is not that easy to manage change internally or externally to overcome resistance and then to sustain sustain that resistance uh, over resistance which we have really thrown out of the window and brought in the change to sustain that and then scale up this will help us give away with all the fna pain points whether it's siloed operation fragmented technologies uh, fraudulent transactions delayed reporting lack of visibility multiple touch points with so many systems in place sub optimal cash flow and which is all delaying the period and closing for making the decision for the next period our journey for the digital finance and the legacy business the values was cost efficient process sla reporting and the levers we use which we were using was shared services model labor arbitrage offshoring it to the developing nations or the low cost country lean six sigma legacy tools and wrapper but with the changing world with the changing technology landscape altogether the levers have changed to digital tools and te technology design thinking deep domain expertise which brings in the values of maximizing profit no longer we are talking of a cost reduction we are talking of a maximizing profit eliminate manual work reimagine process focus on business metrics if you look at the some of the kpis although there are plenty you can see on the slide but even if any organization is trying to pick up 3 and 4 they would have a good value for money in the entire digital transformation journey your order cycle times even if it is top performers are doing in 5 hours whereas industry average is much uh, higher than that which is close to around 15 hours invoice cycle time top performer 6 days industry average 11 days 
Look at any KPIs, the difference and the variation from the top performer and the industry averages. Even if we are able to move a needle for our own business by even 10, 20%, it will become significant, bring in significant efficiencies and add dollar to the bottom line as well as top line. So all the manual inefficient process first need to be diagnosed. We need to really look at the current state of our business, assess the current benchmark, do a time and motion studies, and then bring in process re-engineering and harmonization with the help of digital tools and technology available. Whatever can be automated, which is a repeated task, should be put for the automation. Your analytics should help you arrive at the quick decision, and all of them should be available on the mobile. Use of technology, if we look at Gartner's recent report, back office should be AI enabled with the virtual assistant. You no longer need people to manage the back office. Your middle office with the help of smart contracting, front office with the help of machine learning and artificial intelligence, and decision making by intelligent, powerful engine with the help of AI ML. Office of the CFO with DeFi enables innovate, uh, innovative options for raising capital, and NLP for better understanding of our retail investors sentiment. So our key technologies like RPA, BPM analytics, which can transform the FNA processes for better monitoring and control. First time extraction of data with a high degree of accuracy, improved measurable productivity, Reduced ongoing cost because now you are extracting everything automatically without any errors or reworks also goes away. Scalable solutions to allow for future growth and reduction in human errors because now you are using automation and the engines to extract and then through workflow approve your transactions rather than uh, <clears throat> rather relying on the human uh, which is potentially to make an error. So as published by Gartner, even one FTE capacity, which is freed up, can bring in significant reduction of your manual work, reduction of errors, so thereby reducing rework, faster processing time, enhanced auditing process, and improved staff engagement. Because you are not letting those people do same monotonous job again and again, rather than using their services into some other value added area. Two to four FTE capacity feed up again bring significant FTE uh, benefits. Of course, with 10 plus FTE, which is the third phase of fan, uh, your pan finance adoption across the globe, is what you can expect for. Analytics helps us really taking faster decision whether it is procure to pay, order to cash, or cost reduction. Your customer centricity in procure to pay with the help of analytics goes up by uh, is 20%. In order to cash, again, it is 20%, whereas in cost reduction, it is 13%. Similarly, your revenue enhancement is a uh, green blocks on the P2P and O2C, where it's a significant portion it is taking up. And of course, risk reduction, which is helping a lot in P2P, O2C, as well as in a cost reduction process. The recipe for the success for any process efficient FNA is your intelligent data capture so that you are no one is keying in or punching in data manually. With the help of AI, ML, and robotics, intelligent process management through a workflow, as well as defining various process changes, defining various thresholds so that your straight through processing is touching close to around 65 70%. Robotic process automation, which is then feeding in data to your ERP automatically rather than again manual punching, and all of them being analyzed through a data visualization and analytics engine with the help of deep domain knowledge gives you really efficient process. Thank you so much, Naveen, for the insights shared on finance transformation. I definitely hope that this might have built in many few questions in the minds of our audiences. And now we are moving towards the Q&A session. So the first question that we have is, 
what are the biggest barriers to implementing automation within processes? The foremost of the biggest barrier is change management internally and externally. Wherever I have seen this process really succeeding is whenever it is a top-down approach so that that change management uh, and the resistance which is coming either from internally or externally from the supplier is taken care of. If we have, are able to handle that change management process efficiently, uh, I can guarantee the success is almost 100% in any automation initiative. Okay. The second question we have is, how can we utilize the data captured for business continuity in anticipation of supply chain disruptions? So whenever there is a supply chain disruption, and when we saw also, uh, if let's say if, if I take an example of invoice, it is coming physically, right? There is invoice is not reaching on time, then people are working from home, so they are not able to collect invoice, and then it needs a punching in, which is prone to our mistakes time and again. If it is digital, then there is no delay, no logistics is stopping the invoice. The entire data is extracted by the engine automatically, which is correct for the first time. And then it goes through a workflow with automatic approval and straight through processing. So the entire automation journey has removed all the bottlenecks whatsoever, which we may have due to supply chain logistics. Okay, next question. What level of human intervention or validation do you believe is absolutely necessary after a successful transformation process? Basically, 10 to 15 percent, I will still say, is needed because of the controls and the checkpoints, because of the compliance. Other than that, as, as long as we have built all the validation rules and possible permutation and combinations in our AIML engine, it does take care of all the uh, control uh, checkpoints. Okay. Uh, next question. In your experience, what are the key steps for sustainable cost reductions during a crisis? Hello, Muskan. Vimal here. I'll take that question. So, in our experience, there are three key steps which we have uh, learned in our uh, experiences that are very essential to reduce the cost. They are first, you have to understand and eliminate the unwanted processes. Second, whatever essential processes you have identified, bring efficiencies by integrating those to the core and compliance system. And third, it is uh, implement automation wherever possible. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next question: Which automations have you implemented? Uh, have you implemented or suggest implementing to cushion f &E industry during a global crisis? So the first and foremost, what we have uh, uh, we have learned or what we have experienced is that the most important thing, uh, the most important solution is that vendor collaboration solution, where a customer can onboard existing and new vendors, manage their payments very easily, seamlessly, I would say. Then, as already mentioned by Naveen, uh, in his uh, slide number 20, smart workflows for approvals, routing payments, and exception management. Digitization is one another thing. And of course, the analytics, which helps in increasing the predictability uh, as uh, of the eventualities, especially in the case of supplies to payment cycle. These are the very key things which we have, uh, which are the key uh, uh, tools, which automations, which will help us implement it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question: How do you suggest the FNA industry tackle the increasing costs in a hiring talent, b supply chain issues? First and foremost, which comes in our mind is that automate all the manual tasks. Second, we would say that reskill and upskill the internal resources so that they can handle uh, higher responsibilities. Uh, Ensure the supply chains, diversify the supply chains by onboarding new board vendors in different geographies. And of course, enter into long-term contracts and guaranteed volumes to ensure high stability. Also, you can have a, a preferred payment terms to ensure that there's an incentive, incentive for the 
suppliers. So I believe that all these four factors will ensure uh, uh, the tackle the increased cost. I believe. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question: What can be the main reason for failure during an FNA transformation? I would say that uh, the high expectations, maybe uh, most of the automations, uh, the short term. Uh, what people are looking at actually is that very short term ROI is the main reason for perceiving the initiatives as a failure. But if you look at it, leaders who prioritize longer-term sustainable goals over the short-term goals in the ROI assessment of a transformation project seems to be uh, or have proved to be more successful. So we have to keep uh, this uh, mindset that, of course, if I automate this thing, uh, immediately I'll get a short-term ROI. We have to remove that uh, mindset. I believe uh, we should have a very long-term uh, uh, plans, have end-to-end -end kind of uh, uh, solutions and automations. All right. Uh, next question. What are the dynamic changing landscapes which affect f &A during a crisis and how can you tackle them? Uh, yes. Uh, first and foremost is that we need to categorize uh, the changing uh, dynamics. Uh, for example, if it is a customer expectation, uh, what, how we can do that? We need to identify that what are the must-be needs. These are the features expected by the client by default and what need to be met. So this is the first thing we need to look into that. The second is that what are the performance needs? Of course, the better this need is satisfied, the happier the customer will be. Oh, after one point of suffixing this improvement, I believe that uh, it will require significant higher efforts. The third, I would say that attractive needs. So I'm talking from a customer perspective, changing landscape. These are needs which customer typically don't expect, but add a lot to their overall impression of the product. So we have to categorize them and we have to uh, 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 rank them. What is the high priority, medium priority, and the lower priority? So that's how we can uh, help. This. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Naveen and Vimal, for sharing your insights on finance transformation. It was indeed an engaging discussion. Uh, in the interest of time, any further questions will be addressed by our representatives post the webinar. And I would definitely like to thank you all for attending and attending the webinar and taking time out from your busy schedules. I can definitely see a few more questions which are coming in in the Q&A section. But like I said, we will definitely take them after the webinar and our representative will reach out to you. Uh, once again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much.